Hello crafty friends, welcome to another coffee slash tea themed clean and simple card video. I am about to switch to voiceover because there's a very noisy blackbird just outside the window and someone around here is doing some home improvements so it's getting very noisy. But I thought I would just show you what I've gathered for today's card before we switch. So I've got my dies, so far in this little series I've used these. So I think today I might use this die to make something, I guess, like a frappuccino or something. But I've also gathered, oh, and these dies that are coffee splats. I've also gathered some coffee splat stencils or coffee ring stencils. And I've got all my coffee and tea themed stamps out. So I've got a steamy swirl. I've got these with some little coffee beans that I might use. These mugs. There's a whole set of them. Some coffee ring stamps and some more little ring stamps. I've also got a coffee cup. So that's what I'm going to use today to do a bit of a mixed media background panel and then we'll do some die cutting and assembling. Right, I'm switching to voiceover now. To start the process, I decided to do some smushing on a piece of mixed media paper. So I've got some vintage photo, Distress Oxide, I've smushed it onto my glass mat, squirted it with water and then picked it up with my smusher and smushed it down onto this mixed media paper, which is being held in place by a grip mat. If you'd like to know how to make and use a smusher, there is a playlist all about it and there is a link to that in the eye and in the video description. Once I'd finished with the vintage photo, I smushed on some walnut stain just to give a variation in the browns. And obviously I've chosen brown because we're talking about tea and coffee, which generally are brown. Next, I dried that with my hairdryer and brought out my stencils. I wanted the stenciling to stand out against all that smushing. So I used walnut stain for that, the darker of the two brown Distress Oxides that I've got. And when adding the rings, I made sure to get a good distribution all over the piece of mixed media paper because my plan was to chop this down so that I could add part of it to a card, keeping the card clean and simple. So I wanted to make sure that when I chopped it down, I had plenty of rings on the smaller pieces, if you see what I mean. I also made sure to have the rings coming in from the side and down from the top and up from the bottom so that it looked like it was a piece that had been cut from a larger piece of paper. Next, I decided to add some more coffee rings using vintage photo and my coffee cup. So I smushed my vintage photo onto my mat, squirted it with water to make a paint, picked it up with my smusher and added it to the bottom of my coffee cup. This seemed to be the most efficient way of inking up my coffee cup and then plonked that down again, trying to get a good distribution across the whole piece. I didn't want to waste the leftover ink though, so I picked it up with a paintbrush and spattered it on. So this piece of paper is now well and truly coffee stained. Again, I dried that with my hair dryer and then I prepped it for heat embossing. So I went over the whole thing with some corn flour. You can use an anti-static powder tool for this or talcum powder. And this just makes sure that the ink is dry and there's no greasy fingerprints or static on the paper that would attract stray embossing powder. For my heat embossing, I decided to use a grungy, spotty, blotchy stamp that came in a mixed media effects type stamp set. I stamped that on again all over, getting it nicely distributed and I stamped it in embossing ink. I then dipped it in my gold embossing powder and heated it with my heat tool. So now I've got lots of lovely gold dotty bits all over my coffee stained paper. I wanted to add not just visual texture to my paper though, but some physical texture as well. And I decided to do this in the form of die cut coffee rings. So I took another piece of mixed media paper and I 
wiped my ink pads, both the vintage photo and the walnut stain, over the mixed media paper, which has a bit of a texture to it. So that grabbed some ink and left some white bits. So it's it had some variation. I did bring in a brush and do some blending to get more of the colour spread out. And then I cut lots of the coffee rings from it using my two dies. Once I'd done that though, they didn't seem to be quite dark enough, so I did use my finger daubers to add a bit of extra walnut stain to them. To add them to my background, I just dipped them in my high tack PVA glue, and then again, as I did with all the other bits, randomly or evenly, one or the other, distributed them across the whole of the panel, coming in from the sides and the top and the bottom again. Once they were stuck down, I did take some scissors and chop off the overhang and then I used the overhang bits to add back into the background. So there's lots of visual texture going on and some physical texture as well, which I think is nice. I do hope you're enjoying this tea and coffee slash beverage themed mini series. If you've got any requests for other mini series that you'd like to see me do do let me know in the comments and i will definitely add them to the list and see what i've got in my stash that i can use for those once everything on my background was nice and dry i chopped it down into three strips so i can make three cards with that one background I then stuck one of those strips onto a piece of smooth white cardstock and trimmed that out again to give it a little white border. It always makes it look a little bit more finished, I think, when things like this have a white border on the front of a card. I don't always add it, but mostly I do. Once that was stuck down, it was time to work on my die cut. I took a piece of smooth white cardstock and gave it a light blush of vintage photo. And from this, I cut a cup shape. The thing with this die is the bottom of the cup is curved, as you'd expect, but the top of the cup is straight, which looks a bit odd. So I wanted not only to curve the top of the cup, but to shorten the cup a bit because this brown piece is actually going to be the drink inside the cup. So I used the lid die to chop the top of the brown piece off to shorten it and to give it a curve because the lid has a curve on it. So I hope that makes sense. When it comes out of the die cutting folder, you'll see what I mean, hopefully. It's now shorter and has a curved top. And it's going to sit to the left of my card on top of the mixed media panel. Next, I wanted to cut a straw and I thought I'd make it a stripy straw. I chose blue because blue is kind of the complementary colour to this orangey brown. And I thought they'd work well together and it would bring in a pop of lightness to this brown card. I used a brush pen to do some diagonal stripes. And then I used the straw die to cut a straw from my stripy paper. So to glue the brown piece down, I dipped it in my usual high tack PVA glue and added this to the left hand side of my card, as I say. I then brought in my actual cup. So what I'd done was cut the cup body and the cup lid from vellum. But before I die cut it, I put double sided adhesive on the back. So my cup is going to be see through. It's going to be made of vellum. So I popped my straw after snipping its bottom off behind the drink, the brown die cut. I didn't glue the straw down because by the time it's behind the drink and under the sticky vellum, it will be well adhered. Next, I removed the release paper from my vellum cup and stuck this over the brown die cut. So it now looks like the brown drink is in a frosted translucent cup, hopefully. 
Then I took the release paper off of the lid of the cup and I ended up using two tweezers, two pairs of tweezers, to maneuver this into place because at this point in the process, my fingers were stained fairly brown and every time I touched the double-sided adhesive, the ink on my fingers transferred onto the back of the vellum and I didn't want that to happen. So I used two pairs of tweezers so that I could kind of maneuver it and get the straw sticking out the hole in the top all without getting my brown fingerprints all over it. I did think though, once it was all assembled, that the cup needed something on it. I decided to add a gold heart, but I also felt it needed something else. So I used the coffee bean stamps and some coffee coloured archival ink, which is great for stamping on vellum, and stamped the coffee beans as if they were going round the outside of the cup. I then added a gold foiled heart that I cut with the heart die. And for my sentiment, I chose a bold, you're the best, because I thought it really needed to stand out amongst all that dark brown. And I'm really happy with the way this card turned out. I loved the mixed media process. I love the translucent vellum cup, and I think the sentiment really pops. So. That's it. I do hope you've enjoyed this third video in the little mini series we're doing at the moment. If you did enjoy it, if it's given you some ideas, then please leave a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments, subscribe, ring the notification bell, and I'll see you back here tomorrow for another video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.